I've been invited to Sumatra, where I'm seeking some of the most endangered species on the planet. So I went back to Medan to get my second mission from Mahmood, the Eco Warrior. Bark taxis here are rarer than orangutans in the wild. Taxi! So I had to chance it on foot. It's like my mood said, meet him outside the main shopping centre by the red scooter. Well, I'm here, but oh, my mood. The thousands who fill Medan's central market every day come to sample all the tastes of the Sumatran melting pot. The unique flavours of Aceh, Batak, Malay, and Chinese. It is also the best place to get a few supplies for my onward journey. From out there, it's amazing. This is nice, krupok. What is it? Krupok, this is very Indonesian. What is it? You fry them a little bit and they grow up. Like prawn crackers? Yeah. Let's get so some of them. So we get... of them yeah. yeah, look. Anything else we need? Washing powder? Because uh... I'm going deep into the jungle, there's going to be nothing there, surely. There's no washing machines either. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's um, cinnamon. That cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. yeah. Cinnamon. Very nice. This market is unbelievable. But then it's a bit of a melting pot for different... There's so many different faces here. Yeah. The original people are the Malay people. Yeah. And then they come down from the mountains of the Batak people. The Malay, Batak. And then came the Javanese who brought in to work on the plantations. Right, Japanese. Uh, and then you have Tamil from India. Right. Also to work wow, on. OK. And all the Chinese, which is a very big group in Medan yeah. now, yeah? So that's an amazing amount of lot. Yeah, plus, so, plus other, other minor yeah. groups, yeah? Other minor groups? Yeah, Yourself, so. sir? I'm not so minor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you've got all the people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that brings in all the religions as well. So, is there much conflict between the uh, different Not groups? in Medan, because right. uh, they've learned to live with each other yeah. quite well, and they have a tradition of working together. The thing is, I can never resist the Chinese breakfast. And although it was Ramadan and my host was fasting, oh, well, I, you just have to watch me. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, no, look, I'm feeling even guilty. Now the prayers and the moss have, like, cranked up, just as my food arrived. Lovely and simple. <laughs> look away now. OK. I managed to take Mahmood's mind off the noodle soup by asking him about his work mm. running the country's most important conservation program. What's your main work, though, here is conservation for the turtles in the forest? That's one part of it. The other part is developing ecotourism. Or tourism, yeah. We do the conservation, yeah. but to save the turtles, you have to start in the villages. Yeah. Of course. You have to give something to the locals yeah. to develop their economy, yeah. and then they automatically will see the point of yeah. Saving the turtles, for example, and the forest, and the coral reefs. Yeah. So that's my main job, is to develop the ecotourism. Yeah. And then my colleague, Maggie Mermans, from Holland. Yeah. yeah she's a turtle expert. Yeah. We'll meet her okay. in Polabanyak later, yeah. That sounds good. Mahmoud told me which ferry to catch to get to Pula Banya, one of a chain of remote islands off the west coast of Aceh. I didn't keep my eye on the timetables and missed the next ferry out. So I had to hang around and wait for a lift. Luckily, everyone around here has got a boat. Rather than wait for the next ferry, I hitched a ride with Youssef, a local fisherman. His price was a free English lesson. You see, when one finds oneself on a tropical island, what is one to do? Obviously, the best afternoon. Get your local fisherman, this is Mustafa, and we're going out to the deep sea to get fishing and get some supper. Wow. See, I can smell the fish, yeah? To fish, you've got to be the fish, you've got to feel the fish, you've got to embrace the fish. I thought I'd be like with traditional nets or something, or maybe a fishing rod, but it's like a round bit of wood. Oh, well, that means that I've got nothing to do but just relax and like, enjoy the sun and the tropical island. 
Fishing is about patience and waiting. You've got to be able to wait patiently. Do nothing and even more nothing until... Yeah, coming in. Oh, yeah, that's the catch of the day. Whoa. Yeah. The guilty thing that I've just realised is it's Ramadan, so the poor fishermen here can't even eat this. So when we go to the island and have a barbecue, I'm going to be eating this in front of him. That's, that's terrible. Ooh. And again, how can I resist? You, if you could smell that, you'll know my dilemma. Yeah, not you, no, not you. Yeah. Don't, ah, don't even look at my fish, yeah? These are all, these are all for me. I felt a little bit rude planning to eat in front of my host, but I figured that if I could stretch out the afternoon a bit longer, then it would get to sunset and Yusuf would be able to break his fast and join me. He said getting to paradise was going to be easy. Got to make an effort, haven't you? Oh, nearly there. Beautiful white sands. Yeah! Ooh, lovely. Out there, this looks like an absolute tropical paradise. And you get here, and I'm here just picking up some bits of wood for the barbecue, and it's just littered in rubbish all the way along the shore, obviously just, you know, washed up. Most of it is like tons of plastic bottles. Ridiculous. Conserving these unique habitats is a long-term goal, and cleaning up is all part of the game. Finally, I got my chance to give Yusuf a lesson. Bit of English cricket. Okay. Using a biodegradable bat and ball, of course. Oh, no. Love it. Look it. Oh. Barbecue time, yeah. He's going to light it from a disused flip flop. At least some rubbish is useful. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to get mine, I'm burning my hands. Ooh. Oh, that is fantastic. It doesn't get fresher than that. After sharing our catch, I saw something which even for a man who's been invited all over the planet as much as I have, always leaves me gobsmacked. A sunset which looked like it had been put on especially just for me. I've been invited to Sumatra by a trio of eco-warriors who are saving its unique wildlife and habitats. I finally made it to Ujung Silit to meet the expert who guards the nesting grounds of the rare green turtles. Hi. Are you Maggie? I am. Nice Hi. to meet you. Welcome Good. Welcome to Kulubanyak. Good to be here. Are you ready for paradise? Always. Maggie is one of the world's best young conservationists. She believes that grassroots action and locally based ecotourism are the only way to guarantee the turtles' future. Hello, Mister. The first welcome was friendly enough, but as we got to meet the village elders, there was a bit of a row going on about whether we could film or not. There's a big meeting going on, we just got off the boat to see whether we're going to stay on the island. To be honest, I think I'll be all right, but Maggie... You never know. ..could be in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, there's always big meetings involved with things like this, so it always needs to be discussed. It's like going through customs. <laughs> the discussions went on into extra time. <laughs> but I still didn't have a clue what they were talking about. I think it went well. We're still on the island. While the deliberations went on, Maggie and I decided to take a stroll up Main Street. So tell me a little bit about this village and the island. 
Well, this is a Christian village where, we need, where we're here now, so these people don't do the fasting. So that's the contrast between this island. So that island there, half an hour away, is all Muslim and everyone's waiting to eat yep. in the evening when the sun goes down. Whereas then you come half an hour here and everyone's it's Christian and different. eating. And... Yep. Yeah, it's, it's all very different and it's nice yeah. because it gives that diversity and different culture and language is different as well. And what about ecology and what's happening well, in this island? This village sort of looks after all these forests around here. So you've got the mangroves along the coast there, you've got yeah. the coral reefs and you've got beautiful pristine rainforest. Yeah. And they sort of are guardians of that area. And what... So they, but th surely they fish on the corals and all that so that messes them up a bit. Then? Well, they used to, but then um, we sort of try to divert them from that by saying, look, we've got uh, an alternative for you. It's like a trade. Yeah. And what, uh, what we did is we offered them something in, in return of not fishing in those coral reefs. Maggie and the team came up with a great plan to provide the islanders with something that has made them the envy of all their neighbours. <laughs> this is Uju Sialid football team. This could be a big match and I'm going to knock them into shape. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> For environmental purposes, because most people in the village, as you've seen, are fishermen, and they fish the coral. So the environmentalists in this area said, look, if you don't fish the coral and kill all the coral off, then we'll build you a nice big football pitch. And as you can see, with a kit. And now they don't fish at the coral. Right, I'm in there. Come on, call now. Opposition weren't very eco-friendly in front of goal. They couldn't even conserve a clean sheet. Look at that. Crock of gold at the end of that one. And we are going to find it, yeah? And exchange it. Of course, and put it into research. Yeah, right. You won't see us again. <laughs> Maggie took me to the other part of the island to meet Mrs. Cernia, who runs one of the...